Luddite, uh, yeah, interesting business, this exchange of values, this um, idea of is one person's good worth someone else's bad. Um, you mentioned that you thought that someone who would hold that the torturing of one child is um, not too high a price to pay to ensure the safety of humanity, uh, or the existence of humanity, I suppose. Uh, you said that that person would be a monster in your reckoning. I think that if we read things a certain way, yes. Um, I agree. But I would say that here is where empathy comes in. And by empathy, um, I'm not just saying empathy for those who suffer, by the way. If empathy is incumbent upon one of us, it's incumbent upon all of us. The assumption in our society, I suppose, or in our the general thrust of our ethical zeitgeist, is that there are people who are the subjects of empathy, and there are people who are the objects of empathy. In other words, um, certain people should be empathized with, whereas other people, there is no requirement to empathize with these people. Um, in your case, there is an imperative, I presume, to empathize with the tortured child. I agree. But what follows from that is, we have to empathize with everyone, or else empathy is... Uh, I won't say a meaningless concept, but it's a slightly degraded concept uh, compared to what it could mean. Um, <clears throat> The reason I say this is we have the perhaps subconscious assumption sometimes that there's no obligation for those who are in a negative value state, i.e. someone who is suffering, to empathize with those who are in a positive value state. Um, that there is no obligation or even no rational reason why someone would do that. If I am nailed to the cross, why should I empathize with that happy suburban family that I see right across the street? Why should I empathize with those people? Well, I'll put it this way. If I refuse to empathize with people who are in a positive value state while I am in a negative one, I am essentially um, condemning myself to the cross in perpetuity. Because I'm saying, ultimately, that positive value state, that happy suburban family, does not exist. I'm not just saying that I am in a bad state. I am saying I am in the true state. And that over there is an illusion. Um, so it's not even a question of moral uh, imperatives <clears throat> for those in a negative value state to empathize with those in a positive value state. It's for your own good. Um, Because if I say that the positive value state doesn't exist, or if I say those who are in a positive value state don't deserve to be there, then I'm saying there is no other state than the one that I'm in. So there's really nothing for me to empathize with for this happy suburban family across the street. They're not really there. Their happiness is an illusion even to them, and they know this. <laughs> Um, if you want to use empathy, use it wisely. Don't use it to imprison yourself in a horrific circumstance. You mentioned the word horror. And I would say that a horrific circumstance is where you are in the negative and not only 
don't you believe in your possibility of getting out of the negative, but you don't believe there is a positive. Some people have said that that's the hallmark, essentially, of the depressed mind. The person who is, who understands, in a sense, that they are not where they want to be. That it's, um, <clears throat> that their present state is terrible. But they believe, ultimately, as well, in addition to that, that their present state is the only state there is. If you're in a negative state, it's not just morally the right thing to do to empathize with those in a positive state. It's, <clears throat> it's also the sane thing to do. Because only by doing that do you open the door to the possibility of being in a positive state. I understand that we all have limitations as to what our positive states can be. For example, I might consider it a positive state to, uh, I don't know, be the Tsar of Russia. <laughs> um, it's not within the realm of possibility for me to become the Tsar of Russia. Uh, but that doesn't mean that a positive value state does not exist. If I'm in a negative value state, it's necessary for me to empathize with those who I recognize as being in a positive value state, if for no other reason than to make me understand that there is an alternative to what to the state that I'm in. In a certain sense, you don't owe anyone else um, empathy for those whom who may be in a positive value state when you're in a negative one, you owe it to yourself. You're saying that the lifeboat does exist. <laughs> you don't have to actually feel envy. That's different. That's an entirely different thing. Envy is not the same thing as feeling that at least an alternative to my horror exists. And empathy is the way to find out if it does exist. I posit the view that there are people out there who are happy, who are in positive value states, or at least are where they want to be, that if things continue the way they are, they will consider their life to have been a good one, a, a life worth living. There are those who, and I've actually felt this way in my life, who believe that life in and of itself is not worth living and that the negative value state is the default position and that those in a positive value state are either um, indifferent to a depraved extent or are simply living an illusion. Um, in other words, if there are people out there in a positive value state I have lost my capacity to empathize with them. Thus, slamming shut the door on my own prison and my own dungeon being a negative value state. Empathy for the suffering might be the obligation of those in a positive value state. Empathy for the happy or the actualized or the sufficient might be the obligation for those in a negative value state. Our society seems to, or our, as I said, the zeitgeist of our ethical system seems to militate against that. It seems to state otherwise, that empathy only goes one way. But I'd say empathy is a two-way street, and it can't be otherwise, or it's not empathy. <laughs> Great video.